Okay, so a flow line for a vector field is going to be a curve C that has the property that the tangent to the curve is equal, uh, uh, the tangent to the curve at a given point is equal to the vector assigned to that point by the vector field F. Yeah? So that might sound like a mouthful, but it's actually the straightforward idea that you probably immediately intuited when you saw the picture. So let's look at our first example here. So this is um, some crazy vector field, log of one plus uh, y squared, log of one plus x squared. I just took this one because it was in the book and it looked pretty. Oh, and I noticed that this book likes to use the angle bracket notation for vector fields. It doesn't mean anything different than regular round parentheses, but maybe it helps kind of point out that it's a vector field. So I'll adopt that. Okay, and so a flow line is just a curve that goes through like this. And, and the key point here is that if we look at a given uh, location, the tangent to the curve matches up with the vector that's supplied there by the vector field. So it should have this property that everywhere where it passes through one of these arrows, it's tangent to the arrow, to the arrow whose uh, base is, is right there. So it's kind of, you know, connecting the dots kind of thing. So if I've drawn this right, we should have, you know, like tangents going along here and here. And if I pick any point on this curve, then and ask for what the vector field assigns to that, I should get something that uh, <coughs> looks like what I already had for my plot of F. So moving on to our next example, um, minus y comma x. So this is the one that we did before. And I, I did a very simple version of it. We just had ones that went like this, 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 and this, and then this, 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 and this. Um, <clears throat> but so mathematically has drawn me sort of a nicer picture here. And you can kind of see from this nicer picture that the flow lines look kind of like circles. And you might wonder if they're uh, spirals or circles. Definitely when I drew it before, they looked a little bit more like spirals. But for this one, we can actually compute the flow lines explicitly. So the flow lines for this one, c of t are equal to, and then there's gonna be some coefficient, cosine t, sine t, right? So if I were to multiply the coefficient in, it would be like r cosine t r sine t. So you say, okay, how do we check that this, these are flow lines? So uh, this is a flow, line for each r. Okay, well if we um, look at the derivative, then, well actually here, let me just back up just briefly. First off, notice what this is telling us is this is uh, actually giving us a formula for x, x is r cosine t, and y, r is r sine t, right? So, then when we look at the derivative, we have minus r sine t, and we have r cosine t just by differentiating each coordinate. And then if you look at it, you realize that this is equal to um, negative the blue y that we found up above, and then the x. So, <coughs> This is exactly what f assigns to the point uh, at the time that you're passing through. Okay, so um, let's look at maybe another example. If we have now, let's take a, a three-dimensional vector field. So here's a vector field on R3, and we'll just take it to be um, a constant vector field. Two minus three, one. Okay. So I can't draw three-dimensional vector fields all that well. They're sort of a chore. Um, just drawing all the stupid arrows in the first place is a bit difficult, but let's see. If I look at the one attached to the origin, it's gonna go uh, one, two, one, two, three, uh, one. So let's see, somewhere here. Boom, okay. 
So now if I try and draw this uh, vector field, it's going to um, assign this vector to any place where I go to evaluate it. So this is kind of what you see on a windy day when the wind is just blowing that away, right? Everywhere you are, it's blowing the same. Okay. Um, so this guy is going to have um, flow lines that look like uh, x of t, y of t, z of t. That has the property that um, so if it's flow line, so if this is in fact a flow line, then the defining property says that c prime of t has to be equal to this two minus three one that we found at every single point. And so we also know that the derivative just by differentiating coordinate by coordinate is going to be uh, this guy, so x prime, y prime, z prime. And so that's gonna be two minus three, one. So then that tells us that x prime is two, y prime is minus three, and z is equal to one. And so uh, from that, we can deduce that x is going to be um, 2t plus some x naught, y is going to be minus 3t plus some y naught, and um, z is going to be uh, t plus z naught. And what's that constant? Well, that constant x naught, y naught, z naught, that's the point that you're passing through. So some given point here, so this is x naught, y naught, Z naught. Um, and so in other words, we've determined that our uh, flow line is going to be 2 minus 3, 1 times t plus whatever point we pass through. And if you look at that, all of a sudden you go, oh yeah, well, duh, sure, because it's just going to be lines moving that are all parallel to this vector field. That's what this formula says. Going through a given point, it moves in this direction as t increases.